So today I'm gonna to share a step-by-step -step method for you to follow along with so you can actually perfect layout design in your graphic designs each and every time. Today's video doesn't concern logo design, but more the layout of print and web design projects. I've also partnered with 3M Visual Attention Software, also known as VAS, in today's video to show you all about layout and how to use this tool to check if your design layout is achieving the visual hierarchy that I'm looking for. So the first thing I'm gonna do is establish a grid for the layout. Now, of course, you should know the dimensions of your document, so maybe it's A3 as an example. Using a grid can inform the position of different elements on your page, and you're going to create a connection between the different elements that make up your design. Now, this can provide a sense of order to your page layout, providing the reader or the viewer with a clear structural reference to fall back on, and this also increases the success of your design. Now, the grid you use is entirely up to you, but here are some popular choices. Now column grids utilize, well, pretty much columns, and they do this by creating areas that run down the page or your design. Column grids are typically used in magazines or brochures, but also a lot of websites incorporate them as well. Now in layout design, the areas that are in between the horizontal flow lines or vertical lines are also known as modules, and these areas will be set up for your content or your negative space. More about that later. Now modular grids are similar to column grids, apart from they have rows as well as the columns that go down. Each module is often a square in modular grids, and you don't need to fill up all of the squares in your modules. Again, we're going to see more about that later. Now modular grids are very easy to apply to pretty much any design. So these are the two main grid systems, but there are many more, and you can create hierarchy by just using square modules. But of course, there are things like rule of thirds or even the golden ratio, which I personally have never used. I don't like the golden ratio. But yeah, you can use any grid that fits your design. But when you're working on a print project, you have to be mindful of the bleeds and the margins as well. So once you have your grid, let's move on to the next stage. You should have a good idea of what your design's message is or what you want the design style to evoke. That's all concluded in the research phases that you should be doing. Today's video is about laying those ideas out efficiently. So one of the most effective ways to provide a sense of balance right out of the gates is to choose a single focal point for your design. Now a good example of a solid focal point is the use of a large image as the biggest single element, or a large source of simple typography. The focal point is going to be that thing that pulls in the viewer to your design and that grabs attention with a hook. Without a focal point, a design falls flat and is easily missed or forgettable. The focal point is where the viewer starts the journey on your design, but where do you go after that initial attention grab? So we want to direct the viewer's eye around our designs. And that's because we want them to stay with our work. And then we want to lead them to information that they should consume. This can be achieved by creating little pockets of interest on your designs, or you can use the principle of flow. But one really awesome way to gauge whether the viewer's eye is traveling where you want it to is by using VAS. Now I've talked about this software before on my channel. It utilizes complex AI to test your designs. And in this instance, we can run the design through the software to track where the viewer's eye is likely going to travel from the focal point onwards. And that is with the gaze sequence. So I want the viewer to recognize and to land on my call to action button, learn more. Yet you can see the path clearly isn't achieving this. If the path isn't to your liking, then change up the order of your design or just create pockets of interest and mini focal points as I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to edit the location and the color of my call to action. And that's going to create a more optimum layout for this call to action being recognizable. If we run the design through the gaze sequence again, we see the call to action is likely going to be hit by the viewer's eye movement. Now negative space is crucial to your design layout and it's your friend, not your enemy. Negative space gives your designs that room to breathe and it establishes which groups are associated with each other and it helps other things such as hierarchy. You can use grids to set up this negative space. And personally, I think having a modular grid with quite a lot of modules does work well for establishing your negative space. Now, I like to keep things simple. And for me, it's a good tool for doing that. 
A repetition can also provide a strong sense of connected design balance to a composition. The idea is that by identifying and reusing a motif or a design element throughout your design layout can provide a reference for the reader so that separate areas feel connected and are part of the same overall composition. So you can do this by repeating shapes or symbols in areas of your design. Or the method I really like to apply is to use colors to connect different aspects of my design together. So heading back to VAS, if you do run your designs through its testing parameters, you will see how effective your focal point really is. Now remember, this is where the audience is gonna start their journey. So you need to have a high score around your focal points. Using faces or human form is a good method. Also contrasting colors and just simply using size to your advantage works really well. Now I like to use VAS to highlight my focal point and then other important areas that I want the viewer to see as areas of interest. These numbers tell me the percentage likelihood a person will notice these areas of my layout. And then checking the visual element score, I see what is about the area that is driving my score. This section does relate back to those aspects that I spoke about in regard to faces and contrasting colors and so forth. So here it's intensity, edge, contrast, faces. If I wanted to, I could adjust any of these elements within my design to see if I can increase the probability that it'll attract the viewer. But if you think this software is useful, you can also grab yourself an extended free trial version of VAS by clicking the link down below. And also make sure to use that code THOMAS to ensure you do gain those five extra free trial credits. I hope you did learn something about layout and how to actually structure your designs from one step to the other. And if you do want to learn something else about design, click a video on screen. Until next time, design your future today. Peace. Peace.